Hey pretty girls and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is yet another makeup tutorial. My favorite types of videos and seemingly you guys' favorite types of videos as well. Our focus however in today's video is achieving a flawless makeup look without any flashback. You know like for your nighttime parties, your club scene, basically just anywhere where you'll be taking nighttime pictures and using flash especially and you know you don't want your makeup to look anyhow. You want what people are seeing to be showing up on your camera as well. Like for example imagine you're doing movie night and chill with your bae or a sneaky link I don't discriminate let's say he decides to record how sweet and pretty you're looking for the night now that he's recorded you you guys are looking at his phone like don't get me wrong, in person you look good, but on his phone your makeup is looking very much unblended, very much patchy. Honestly, at this point, I just have to have my face, like, take me, take me home, take me home now. Like sis, you can't go outside with this one. I personally will not allow it. Today, today by force, we're perfecting our no flashback makeup routine. And speaking of movie night and chill, let me tell you guys about the perfect streaming service for your movie night. Just think about it. A movie night accompanied with good food and an all black TV and film streaming service for you and Bay to enjoy honestly just sounds like my cup of tea. All black is an exclusive black entertainment platform dedicated to providing you with binge worthy content that celebrates black creativity. You'd get to enjoy movies and shows by familiar faces whenever and wherever you want, whether that be on your laptop, your TV, Roku stick, Apple TV, at home, library, in Bay's arms. <laughs> or even simply just on your phone. Downloading and streaming the app is super quick and easy. All Black is still growing, but I love what it's becoming. There's so much to choose from, from genres like romantic comedies, dramas, docu-series, international film, and so much more. You're honestly bound to never run out of something to watch because All Black has 10 to 12 original series premiering every year, plus acclaimed independent films, thrillers, reality shows, stage plays, and popular series. With all of those genres, honestly speaking, I can't wait until they start are adding Nollywood movies as well but in the meantime Like Cotton Twines was a very close second that I enjoyed. It's filmed in Ghana and tells this beautiful story of an African-American man who takes on a teaching job in the villages of Ghana and is essentially just committed to changing the trajectory of a 14 year old student's life who is forced into religious slavery aka Juju. I promise you it's worth your time as well as so many other series like Monogamy Season 3 and Dead Places which is actually a thriller based in South Africa and y'all all of this can be enjoyed at just $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year now in this economy $4.99 a month is a deal you seriously can't beat and did I mention it's ad free for $4.99 girl I am 100% sold but if for whatever reason you don't trust my word and yes I'm judging you just go ahead and try it out yourself at no cost by streaming where you're celebrated all day and all night try all black free for 30 days by going to allblack.tv slash exclusive and use my promo code Lexclusive for money off. And of course, as usual, all of this information can easily be checked out down below in the description box. get into the routine I feel like it's very important to highlight the things that will set you apart and you know help you accomplish this no flashback makeup routine and the list is short I promise it's very very simple to me the main things that will play a huge role are the brushes that you use and especially your brush application you don't want anything that is too streaky and that just doesn't give a nice even balance of makeup the next thing is your sponge I personally like using this real techniques beauty sponge the next thing is setting spray after spraying on that setting spray it's really good to kind of use your sponge and just bounce everything in and blend it in even more. So the next thing is a perfect foundation match. Obviously, if you have a foundation that is much, much brighter than your actual skin tone, when you're taking flash related videos and pictures, it's going to be very obvious that it's not matchy, okay? Spend that extra time to find a perfect foundation match because I promise you it's going to set you apart. Obviously, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this work for you along with all the other steps of your makeup routine, but just keep in mind that these are the key factors to me when 
when it comes to just making sure that I am not looking mostly ghostly when someone takes a picture of me with flash. So if it wasn't already known, let it be known now. I am an eyebrow before makeup type of girl. My eyebrows are always the first thing that I do. So let's talk about the eyebrows real quick. I personally like the fluffy brows look. And in order to achieve that, I always use my Style Factor Edge Control. And I just take a little bit of this on my edge control brush and I just kind of tack my eyebrow hairs all the way up because if it isn't up and stuck, I don't want it. I really just love that like sleek eyebrow look and it totally complements my eyebrow routine and like the eyebrow shape that I like to go for and it also keeps my very, very bushy and untamable eyebrows in check. I feel like this is a really necessary step for me and ever since I started doing it, I just haven't stopped. Don't see myself stopping anytime soon. Once I have a good amount of this on my eyebrows, then I just take my finger and like kind of stick it into my skin. And then once the brows are in place, my next step is just going ahead to fill it in using my brow products. I'm a believer in not spending extra coins if you don't need to. I'd like to use a $1 or a two for a dollar eyebrow pencil from the Beauty Supply. I don't need anything that is $20 or more. I'm able to achieve the exact look that I want using this really inexpensive pencil and all I do is I just start by concentrating at the very bottom of my eyebrows and making sure that I get the line and the um the shape that I want. Once I have that shape going on the bottom, it's really easy to kind of see what else needs to be done to my eyebrows. Again, with that brow pencil, I'm just lining the very top of my brow and I'm following the shape that I already have so that it's not too foreign from what, you know, what my brows already kind of look like. Once I do that, I really love having like hair strokes in the front. Better late than never. Now to avoid having non-flashback eyebrows because I feel like that is a thing, I like going in with a concealer that is not too bright. I personally like using the Makeup Revolution Concealer in C13. This concealer, it just gets the job done every single time for me and it's $7. For me, it's just the perfect shade to at least give me a highlighted eyebrow, at least put some attention on my eyebrows. It's not too bright, but it still gives me a really defined brow as you guys can see. I already feel like my brows bring a lot of attention to my face and I don't want to add too much emphasis on it because that's just not a good look for me. So what I like to do especially at the top is just go in with the foundation that I'm going to be using that day or I'll just kind of stick with the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation because this is just the absolute perfect shade for me. I just take a little bit of this and I apply that right at the very top of my brow. If you are really interested in my in-depth brow routine, I do go into great detail on what I do on my eyebrows and if that's something that you're really interested in, then go ahead and click the call Card. I'm gonna have like the brow routine card up there so that you guys can check that out. And like I said, with this exact step, I don't get halo brows, but my brows are still very much defined. You can tell that Shadi spent time on her brows, but they're not shouting at you, okay? A few details on the brushes that I use. I conceal my brows using the M167 brush from Morphe, and I blend out that concealer and foundation using this Real Techniques 200 brush. It's really convenient for me to just clean up my brow concealer and stuff. So once the brow routine is done, my next step is primer. I didn't do this today. I definitely forgot to. On days that I do prime, I do really like going in with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Because I didn't show that to Today we're just gonna move into the next step. That step is just adding some blush to my face. Now this is a routine that I picked up on after making a TikTok hack video. I just haven't stopped since. It adds a bit of color to my face without it being so heavy. I use the NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush Cream and this is in the shade Showgirl. But I just like adding this to the highest points of my face and then I like to blend that in using the sculpting brush. This is the Real Technique Sculpting Brush in 401 and I just really love using this to buff that blush in. When I really Really like to focus in on it is making sure that I'm not bringing that blush downward. I would rather push that blush up and then cover it with some concealer than bring it all the way down. If anything, it just kind of droops the face and it's not a good look to me. I personally don't like doing it. Once that is done, honestly, it's time to move into foundation and I've already kind of shown you guys a sneak peek of what I use for foundation, but again, I just really love this NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation in the shade Deep Cool. I don't even have to say it, you guys can see. It is a really, really good shade for me. Like it just works perfectly. What I like to do is just place some of that foundation all over my face. I focus it on my nose, especially down here at the bottom of my chin. And then using my Real Techniques Instapop Face Brush. I'm pretty sure it doesn't look like this anymore, but I promise you guys, if you find a shape that is similar to this, it's the brush. Like I 
I said, I do like that blush to kind of peek through but not be too overpowering. What I like to do is focus on blending that foundation all over on the bottom part of my face, the top part of my face, and whatever is left on the foundation brush, that is what I'm going to use to tap that blush in and kind of like diffuse it a little bit without like fully covering it up. Just a little bit of peekaboo is what the blush needs to be doing for me. And as long as it's showing up a little bit, I'm fully content. Your main focus with foundation, again, is just making sure that you have a really good shade match. And another thing is having a really good brush that is not going to leave it very streaky. Let's say, for example, you used a brush like this. You can tell that this is probably not going to give me the best clear canvas. If anything, it's going to be like super streaky and it's just not going to be doing what needs to be done. So like I said, I really love this brush. It's dense enough to the point where it can like really kind of give you like this airbrushed look, but it's not too dense to where it's soaking up all of the foundation. So that's something to keep in mind. Moving into contour, I love using the Black Opal Foundation Stick. It just gets the job done for me as far as contour, and I really love using a shade that is not too dark. Again, flashback is not only for things that are like too bright. There are probably have been times where you've seen someone like post a picture and you can tell like their contour was just way too harsh. So having a contour shade that is really good to at least give you like a really nice like shadow effect without it being like so harsh is the key, it's the truth. And and black opal foundation sticks just work for me and I really love using the shade ebony brown as you can see my natural contour line is like down here but I bring it up just a little bit so that I can still have some cheekbones that my mama did not give me and to blend it out I just stick it through with my real technique blending sponge and I'm making sure that when I'm blending out that contour I'm not bringing that contour too far down if anything I'd rather take it up into my concealer and then cover it up with concealer For my next step, it's going to be concealer. And I really love using the Juvia's Place concealer. So I feel like the main thing that keeps attracting me to this concealer is the fact that it's so liquidy to the point where you can like blend it out very easily and it doesn't dry down too quickly. But it also just has the perfect coverage to give me like a nice even highlighted under eye look. And I really just love that. Yeah, I focus my concealer in on my lower but inner part of my under eye. and. I just give that a little bit of time to dry down so I'll probably give it like two minutes have me a little dance session or something like that and then once those like two minutes are up like I said this concealer doesn't really like it doesn't dry down but I just like leaving it there for a little bit of time all I do after that is just take my Real Techniques blending sponge and I just tap that in my key step with blending out my concealer is kind of keeping the sponge in the same place for a really long time allowing the sponge to soak up a little bit so that whatever is left on the sponge I can just bring it out and it just creates like this really nice gradient effect with like most of the concealer being right in that center part and then just gradually spreading it out and it just looks it just looks so good like you guys can see it it looks so good like I really just don't like having too much concealer or too much product out here to the point where it's like really overpowering so yeah again just concentrate that for a really long time not too long and then blend it out and then obviously I'm going to blend out the concealer concealer that I put underneath my nose but like I said I love good coverage I have bags you guys can even still see it so I will go in again with that concealer and just keep it right in that inner part where my bags are like really prominent and I'll just leave that to sit for a little bit of time but while that is sitting I will go in with my black opal foundation stick again I'm doing my contour by the way my nose contour but instead of like drawing it on like I would usually do I love using the brush I feel like the brush just gives gives it like this really nice like blended out look like it's not too harsh like you can't see like any of the lines or anything like that it just looks really nice and I feel like that picks up really well on camera especially when you're taking like flash photography your nose doesn't look too scary looking it doesn't create too much of a shadow to the point where it just doesn't work for your face it just doesn't look flattering so yeah another key thing make sure that you're not using a shade that is way too dark because you're just creating too much shadow there that is not necessary at all at this step now i will go in and blend out that extra concealer that i did put on now i was watching i think her name is kathy 
Odyssey. I watched one of her makeup tutorials and she left this really good tip. And I really love using that tip when I do my second layer of concealer. But basically she did say that when you're blending out, you basically wanna make sure that you're not blending it off of your face. You're not over blending your concealer. So I really love using that tip when I'm doing that second layer, especially because I'm not spreading that second layer all the way out. I just like to keep it really concentrated so it can still give me that coverage and I'm not having to reapply and reapply and reapply. The tip is basically just to not over blend. Basically, I will then go in with my Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. It's, it's like a really good shade match, but it's a little lighter than my skin tone. I really love using this to kind of diffuse that concealer that I put on. And also, it just creates like that even balance. And I feel like this is one of the steps that have really been playing a key role in making sure that I'm not getting any kind of flashback or anything like that. I will go in with another setting powder on top, but this really just creates that nice base to make sure that this under eye is not too bright or not too cakey for that matter i use the shade deep number 35 you can still see that concealer but this just kind of like tones it down a little bit and with this i do like to focus it all on my under eye but then my next step is to go in with the laura mercier translucent setting powder and what i do with this is to more so focus it on the inner parts of my face there's more focus right underneath my eye and then everything else just kind of blends out so with this setting powder all i do is just take it on my sponge my first couple of layers are going to be blended in if that makes sense like I'm gonna be setting it into my face and I do like to use a good amount of that, of that setting powder on the sponge and like tap it in and keep it concentrated just on the inner parts for me if I'm taking it out it's only to take it out like onto the highest point and once I've set that in the next layer that I will add of this is just a little bit like I'm adding just a little bit onto the sponge and I'm only focusing it right there like right there If you don't want to use a sponge to add that layer of setting powder you could use some brushes and I do have brushes that I want to show you guys that are really good options for that so one is this morphe e49 brush I really love how it's angled but at the same time it's really flat so I can like focus on adding that setting powder right on the inner parts of my under eye you can use this to set the powder all the way in or you can use it to just add really light layers and like kind of bake your face with this powder another brush that I like to use is basically just a really small small condensed brush. In this makeup routine, I did go in with this later on to add some more setting powder, but if you are someone who wants to add just a very light layer of setting powder, I feel like brushes are going to be your best bet so that you're not adding way too much. And yeah, this brush is just a really nice way to blend that in also. Again, you could really use this to like set that powder in or you can use it to bake. I am talking about setting powder a lot because I feel like it's one of the steps that people kind of get wrong and it makes you have that flashback that we're all trying to avoid. And in this step where I do use setting powder, I do love to kind of go over my nose with the extra setting powder that is left on the sponge. And this just really helps to set in that nose contour and concealer if you did put concealer on your nose. So my next step is blush. And I basically just go in with this Juvia's Place Sahara and Blush Palette Volume 1. And I really love going in with these center colors to just add a little bit more color and just, you know, kind of warm up my face a little bit. I only focus it on those highest points of my cheek. And I feel like this just kind of creates like this false illusion of cheekbones. I don't know, it does something to me. I'm just making sure that I'm not applying way too much product so that it's not too overpowering. Like you guys saw, I did use some blush already in the beginning, but this is just to kind of like awaken it a little bit more. You're gonna see me going with my Real Techniques blending sponge a lot to just make sure that I'm like blending out everything. My next step after that is setting my contour and I'm just doing so with this Juvia's Place bronze palette in uh, deep dark. And I mainly just use this bottom color right here and it just adds a little bit of depth to my contour. And I basically just place that contour powder right at the lowest point of my blush. But yeah, I don't really do too much with contour because I feel like my blush already kind of adds a little bit of depth to my face, especially with the way that I place it. But again, to make sure that you're achieving that no flashback makeup routine, make sure that you are not focusing way too much on that blush line to not create too much of a shadow underneath, but still give you a little bit of depth to add some shade and dimension to your face, okay? 
A step in my routine that I have not stopped since I started is going in with a face powder. Girl, this is the truth, especially when you're going to be taking flash photography. So basically, this is a foundation and a powder form. It is the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation Powder. Let's say you are someone who is a little bit heavy handed with your contour or your concealer or your blush even. You can basically just go in with a foundation powder and use a very like fluffy brush and just like kind of pounce that all over my face forehead pounce that on my jawline i'll even pounce it sometimes on my concealer my contour you know at that really nice like blank canvas look everything is going to look like it is coming from within but another thing that i like to do with this is just take like an eyeshadow brush and i just kind of like buff that into like my eyes and stuff and just kind of like create dimension in my eyes and then i'll also even use that same brush and just kind of <laughs> bring it down to my nose contour because this is something that is really close to my actual shade it's not going to create like a really harsh shadow on my nose in other words it's just not heavily contoured and this right here just helps aid in that this is a no flashback makeup routine and I feel like that is one of the key steps I don't think I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about the key factors but that is one of the key factors in making sure that you have a very photography flash photography safe face now that basically majority of my makeup is done, I've done my nose contour, I've added some depth into my eyes, my face is looking very much blended. I'm going to, again, add some more setting powder because I'm just that girl. Like, I just love setting powder. I love the highlighted under eye look. If you don't need it, then obviously you don't need to, but for me, I have eye bags, so I need something to counteract those eye bags, and I feel like adding just a little bit more setting powder is just, it gets the job done for me and I don't do too much but I do enough Okay, so like I told you guys, the second time around that I go in with setting powder, I love using a brush. So I did go in with that BH Cosmetics brush. But yeah, that just awakens that under eye, especially if I've gone too heavy handed with this powder. It just kind of awakens that under eye again. But after that, I'm just gonna go into my lips. I always get asked what I use on my lips and I feel like I talk about it in every video. So you're either just telling on yourself that you obviously don't watch the video all the way through. I always talk about what I use on my lips, but I will talk about it again. So for me, I love a really, really defined lip. So I love going in with really dark lip liners. This one is the Ruby Kisses style lip pencil. It's in the shade dark brown. And this one is the RK by Kiss Ultra Easy Lip Liner. And actually this is in black. So I like to go in with the black one first and then I'll go in with the dark brown one and like go over it, if that makes sense. And then as far as the lipstick or like the base color that I use for my lips, I do love going in with the Juvia's Place Nude Lipstick in Toffee. And I just kind of create like a little solid base foundation that my gloss is going to go on top of. The next thing that I do is just going with a gloss on top. And today I mixed both of the Juvia's Place Nude Lip Glosses in Barely There and Caramel Rose. Yeah, that's basically all I do for my lips. I don't do anything too crazy, but obviously I just really love overlining. As you can see, the face is looking very much put together. The lips are behaving, the contour, the eyeshadow, my brows are looking very much kissable. Everything just looks good. And because I'm pleased with the way it's looking, my next step is to just go in and seal the deal using a setting spray, the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray in Ultra Matte. And this just gets the job done for me. I'm a really oily I feel I used to think I was oily, but I don't think I am as much anymore. Maybe it's because I've kind of switched up my skincare routine, but this still comes in really, really clutch, especially for a really long night. I've kind of given the setting spray a little bit of time to like, you know, kind of set in a little and do what I need to do. Once it's like almost dry or like about to be completely dry, then I go in with this sponge and I just pounce that all over and make sure that everything is like behaving itself and just having some control over that and in this step you can just kind of blend out whatever needs to be blended out a little bit more with all of the setting powder that we've added i really do like to make sure that while that setting spray is on my face that i'm really blending out that setting powder once i'm done with that all that needs to be done at this point is to just put on my lashes and i did so off camera because i am not that girl when it comes to putting on lashes on camera but i will leave all of the details down below and my lashes just puts the entire look to 
together. It just adds that batty effect. But once the lashes are done, everything is pretty much complete. That is basically my no flashback makeup routine. Every single time that I take nighttime pictures, I'm always using flash and my makeup just looks delicious. Like everything looks well put together and it just makes sense. I don't have any under eye flashback. I don't have any contour flashback. I don't have any foundation match flashback. Like everything is really seamless, really balanced. But yeah, that's basically it for this makeup tutorial. I hope you guys really paid attention, loved the details. I hope I was able to teach you something new today because that's always the goal. Don't forget to show some love down below by liking, subscribing, and commenting, telling me how you feel about this video. With all of that being said, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Go ahead and stay tuned for what's to come.